Hey guys, James again for TFB TV. Today on TFB TV, I'm very excited to introduce to you the new Wilson Combat AR9. And this is Wilson Combat 9mm AR15 carbine. And I'm reluctant to refer to it as an AR-15 style carbine because Wilson Combat really wants to emphasize that this gun was developed from the ground up to be a 9mm carbine that shares some similarities with the AR-15. This is the AR-9G, G being short for Glock. This model takes Glock magazines. And while Wilson is going to make a model that takes Beretta magazines and a model that takes Smith & Wesson M&P magazines, I guarantee you that the Glock version is going to be the most popular. You have more options with the Glock magazine. You have manufacturers making Glock magazines that are reliable, high quality, and inexpensive, including Magpul. So to me, I think it's a no-brainer to get the Glock model. So let's go front to back here, guys. To start, you've got a 5.8 by 24 inch threaded nine millimeter barrel that comes with a Q-Comp flash hider on the front. Now, if I can make a brief comment about that, 5'8 by 24 is kind of an odd thread pitch to have for a 9mm barrel. So I'm kind of disappointed to see Wilson go with one of the odder thread pitches for the barrel, but at the end of the day, it's not really that big of a deal. Moving back, you have the Wilson Combat Trim, T-R-I-M, handguard. It's a free float handguard, easy to change out if you need to. And you may be able to see it's got a couple of sling studs, on either side, quick disconnect sling studs, and then it has threaded portions on the three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock of the rail where you can screw on little pieces of Picatinny rail. I also note that for an extra $100 upcharge, you can get a fluted barrel model if you wanna cut down on some weight. I think for an extra $100, that's a pretty decent deal if ounces matter to you. And continuing backwards, you can see that the magwell is flared and beveled very nice, easy insert for the mags, even if you're not looking at the mag well when you're doing it. Very nice billet receiver, has a built-in trigger guard, as you can see here. It's got the Wilson Combat two-stage TTU, or tactical trigger unit, which is supposed to be four pounds. This also comes with a Wilson Combat branded BCM Starburst grip, which has a storage compartment that had no Starburst in it. I think somebody from Wilson Combat ate them before they sent this to me, so I'll be in touch with them about that. Finally, in the rear, you've got the Rogers Super Stock, which is actually one of my favorite stocks. Ugly as hell, but it works very well. It's extremely lightweight, one of the lightest weight stocks on the market. And I gotta say, guys, this gun looks great. It feels great. It's finished in the Wilson Combat Armor Tough finish, which I love. Black, they say that there are gonna be more colors available in the future. But the one hang up with Wilson Combat, you know where I'm going, you know what I'm about to say, price. MSRP on this guy is two grand and $2,100 if you go with a fluted barrel model. Now, you know, that said, you get a lot of value out of Wilson Combat guns. They've been selling their ARs for two grand plus for years and they're not going out of business. Unfortunately for you Southpaws, this is not an ambi gun. It has only a strong side safety and bolt catch. Now when you spend $2,000 on a rifle, you kind of hope that it comes with some nice packaging. Fortunately, Wilson Combat delivers in that regard. They've got a very nice zippered multi-compartment Wilson Combat branded soft case. Kind of clever, the AR-9 also comes with a dog tag that has your AR9 model and serial number on the plate. Okay, first shots with the AR9, let's go. Oh, well, for $2,000, turns out you don't get any sights. Let me go back to the truck and uh, grab an aim point. First shots with the AR9, take two. All right, just had a little failure to fire, but it turns out just a hard primer on this crappy Wolf steel ammunition. I almost feel bad running cheap nine through a, uh, a nice nine millimeter AR like this. All 
Wow. Wow, I mean, this isn't just nice, it's exceptional. Like this really is the trigger. Uh, Wilson's trigger on here is, is amazing. I love this two-stage trigger, very crisp, works very well with the aim point. This is the aim point that's sighted in for my MPX. Um, it's shooting a little bit low, but, uh, but not much. I mean, you can hear it dinging the plate. It's working well enough. I do have a complaint about this magazine release. It takes quite a bit of pressure to not move it very far. Like, I mean, you're, it barely goes in. You gotta really treat it like a seesaw because how it works is uh, this mag release, it's a long piece of metal and so you press down on the back end and it lifts up the front end, the tab that's holding the mag in place. So you just seesaw it out. So the further back you hit it, the better. The AR9 is specifically made to be utterly reliable with all bullet weights, nine millimeter bullet weights. I have 50 rounds. I just plucked from three boxes. We've got aluminum case, 147 grain, brass case, 124 grain, and a lot of steel wolf 115 grain. Let's see if this Wilson can take all of it. Up. Got another hard primer with the wolf, so that makes you kind of wonder if the primer's hard or if this firing pin's hitting a little soft. Again, another one with Wolf. Um, and the dimple's looking really light on this primer, so I am wondering if this Wilson firing pin is hitting a little on the, uh, a little on the soft side. Up, oh, another one, bet it's wolf. Yep, again, wolf. Hard primer, soft strike, combination of the two. Who knows? And again, that I really don't like that mag release very much. Here we go again. Oh. This time that was 147 grain CCI blazer. It's making me wonder if the AR9's hitting a little too soft. It's like the Drake of guns. Here we go again. Oh, nope. That time it went dry, but the uh, the bolt didn't hold open. I mean, as far as feeding reliability goes, it's choking it all down. I mean, it's taking it, but I mean, it looks like the firing pin might be hitting the primers a little bit on the soft side. So, uh, you know, it did that a couple of times with Wolf and with CCI Blazer Aluminum, both of which kind of have a reputation for having harder primers. I also didn't like that the bolt didn't hold open on the last round, but uh, I don't know if this makes any difference. It shouldn't, but that was with a Glock 19 mag uh, from a Gen 2 Glock 19. Um, maybe it makes a difference, maybe it doesn't. The Wilson Combat AR9 comes in nine millimeter with your choice of the 14.7 inch or 16 inch barrel. The overall length on the 16 inch model is 32.75 inches and it weighs six pounds, four ounces, which is pretty lightweight. It comes with a billet AR 
7075 aluminum flat top upper and lower matching receiver. And Wilson promises match grade accuracy out of this thing. But Wilson has outfitted this thing with a proprietary bolt and barrel to maximize the feed reliability with common bullet profiles. It uses a closed bolt blowback operating system that it says is soft shooting and reliable. And this gun is plus P rated, obviously. Okay, so this is my second trip to the range now with the Wilson AR9. I sent it back to Wilson after last week because as you guys saw, um, I had a few problems. There were mostly light primer strikes, and then I had one double feed and one double fire. And again, that was with Wolf, so that was really interesting. Um, but I, I sent it back to Wilson. They checked the gun out. They said the gun's fine. But Wilson did send some really wonky grain weight made by Wilson, um, and I've got it here. They sent me 100 rounds of it. They said, run this through it and see if it works. But a uh, real weird conical bullet and it comes in a Wilson Combat box, and then there's a plastic box in the box. It's like a Russian doll of ammo. But anyways, that's what they sent me. They sent 100 rounds. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna run those 100 rounds through this Wilson Combat AR9. I loaded up a bunch of Glock magazines. I'm just gonna blast and see what happens, and then I'm gonna run some more Wolf through it uh, and, and see what happens. But you know, they said, don't run Wolf through it. That's a little bit like, don't try to run your car in Jack Daniels. It's like, of course, everybody knows that. Um, but, you know, Wolf being as cheap as it is, even though it is garbage, it's great for the range. And you really, if you spend $2,000 on an AR, you kind of do want it to be able to, to take anything you can throw at it, right? Uh, so anyways, well, uh, let me shoot this, we'll peel off this 100 rounds, and then, uh, and then I'll fire some more Wolf through it and see if it has the same problems. Look at that. Second round, failure to feed. God, second round from having it. Right after the first shot, getting it back from the factory. Again, failure to feed. I've, this is a factory Glock 33 round magazine. This isn't the magazine that Wilson sent, but this is OEM factory Glock 33 round magazine. There we go, got it running, um, made it through the rest of those. But yeah, factory Glock magazine, Wilson's ammo. Isn't that adorable? All right, this is the Glock, or the Magpul Glock magazine, the GL9, the 17 rounder. Let's see how it does. Not bad, uh, Glock 19 mag. And it doesn't want to insert on a closed bolt. Up, oh, stove pipe. All right, I just squirted this thing down with WD-40 and I'm gonna give it another run, uh, see how it does. Yeah, ran it, but uh, bolt didn't hold open that time. Let's keep going. Ah, this is Wolf, your old adversary. Got to tell you, Wolf's running a lot hotter out of here. Yep, and there it was again. Light primer strike. Another light primer strike, looks like. You know, I wonder if it has something to do with the two-stage trigger. Uh, I, I wish I knew more about how two-stage triggers worked, what effect that they had on uh, impact, primer impact, 
uh, with a firing pin. But, uh, you know, I wonder if that could explain it. And if you put a GI trigger in here, standard GI trigger, if, uh, if it would work better. All right, now we've got the last two magazines of the Wilson Combat Ammo. There it was, another double fire. Did you guys hear that? God, ATF, if you're watching this, don't take me to jail. I swear to God, I didn't know that was going to happen. Wilson, get your shit together, man. This is a great gun. Uh, this is a great gun, but like I said earlier, um, it just doesn't work. Like, it just doesn't work. I guess it's a little bit like having a Lamborghini powered by a hamster wheel. I mean, this thing looks sleek. Um, and when it works, it's awesome. The trigger's great. Everything about it. I, I, like I said, I'm lukewarm on the magazine release. But other than that, this is a great gun. And this is a shame, guys. I mean, I, I can already tell you, for $2,000, I mean, I... <laughs> man, I mean, the reliability of this thing just worked. This would be amazing. I, I, I might even shell out $2,000 for it. It's a great gun. Uh, it, it just doesn't really work that well. And remember guys, I sent this back to Wilson Combat. I sent this back to Wilson Combat. They said everything was fine. Even after I lubed it up, after I put WD-40 on the bolt, uh, it, it really didn't fix any of the, the issues. So, I don't know, I mean, bummer man. In conclusion, bummer. That is the conclusion, bummer. Uh, great gun. And I, I, I just can't tell you to go out and, and spend $2,000 on this. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, as usual. Uh, please subscribe. I will see you next week. Take care.